Part of the reason why so many large companies choose to use Flutter when they need to support users on more than one platform is Flutter's track record of helping developers ship millions of apps with hundreds of millions of users. That same record speaks to a framework that not only helps teams maintain table stakes app functionality over time, but also enables developers to build higher quality and more imaginative app experiences, while simultaneously enabling companies to expend fewer resources to build, test, and launch the app everywhere it needs to be. That's why so many teams that adopt Flutter see an increase in both their App Store rating and key business metrics like ad impressions and in-app purchases. Flutter also frees teams from platform constraints, empowering them to deliver user experiences in line with their strategy and users' needs, whether that's native, entirely custom, or something in between. So how did a few engineers go from trying to make the web faster to introducing a framework for building beautiful apps across multiple platforms? Well, experimentation. That's why we call Flutter's early days the experimental era. Like Rivers so accurately put it, that experimentation culminated in the release of Flutter 1.0, which featured the Cupertino and Material Widget libraries so that apps could look and feel right at home on Flutter's debut platforms iOS and Android. For the folks who weren't quite ready to fully rewrite an existing application, 1.0 also introduced the option of sprinkling Flutter into an existing native app, what we call Add to App. Development orgs all over the world have been leveraging Add to App to introduce new features for years, including the business and consumer app teams at WeChat one of the world's most popular messaging apps with over 1 billion monthly active users. But that was just the first step in our larger vision to deliver production-grade support for Android, iOS, macOS, Windows, Linux, and the web. Delivering on that vision would come to define Flutter's growth era, a period of time which made clear that our approach and ambition resonated far beyond the Flutter team at Google. Like River said, the ecosystem around Flutter exploded with new faces in code. We expanded support from mobile to web and desktop. The sizes and types of teams willing to bet on an upstart framework with lofty goals grew from individual hobbyist developers and small teams willing to take big bets to startups and small to medium-sized businesses. New design libraries were popping up in the Flutter community to support high-quality UIs for all those users and across all of these platforms, like Fluent Design-inspired Fluent UI, macOS-inspired macOS UI, and the Ubuntu-inspired Yaru widgets. We also added support for new user input methods, like Focus and Shortcuts for desktop users, Scribble support for Apple Pencil users, and Local Auth via Fingerprint, Touch ID, and Face ID, just to name a few. The bar for quality and fidelity kept rising even higher, as did the number of companies that were choosing to adopt Flutter. So, we made it easier to write and use custom fragment shaders to create graphical effects like the animations that bring human-computer interactions to life. We also upgraded internationalization and worked hard on improving accessibility, especially on the web, ensuring that canvas-rendered elements were understandable and interactive for users of assistive technologies right out of the box. The team working on SNCF Connect, France's public transit app, told us they were able to share 90% of their Flutter code across platforms, reduced their release cadence to just one per week with no delay between iOS and Android, and spent less time monitoring multiple stacks. To hear that kind of feedback from the team working on an app with over 15 million downloads, we figured we were on the right track. As with anything in technology, the platforms themselves evolve at a lightning pace. So we've made it a priority to evolve with them by supporting the latest and greatest features as fast as possible. Over time, that has meant doing things like upgrading the material library to support Material 3, unlocking more expressive power and customizability, exploring new slivers and two-dimensional scrolling widgets to reach new levels of UI complexity, 
and building out code generation tools to support seamless integrations with any native API or feature on any platform. Now, Flutter is in its production era, where large enterprises are relying on Flutter to help them deliver on business-critical functions. For example, Scandinavian Airlines, who are filling up their trophy case with design awards while transporting almost 24 million passengers per year. And teams here at Google, like Google Earth, who are relying on Flutter to help users explore our beautiful planet on iOS, Android, and the web, all from a single code base. For the next step in supporting the mission-critical Flutter apps that developers are building and users are relying on, we've shifted our focus to feature completeness and polish across each of our six target platforms, iOS, Android, web, Windows, macOS, and Linux. Our goal is for Flutter apps to be virtually indistinguishable from their native counterparts. In the last year, we've focused on platform fidelity. We've released a combination of new and refined material widgets, improved Cupertino widget fidelity to match the latest iOS design system, added support for Android's predictive back navigation, and expanded embedding capabilities on the web to include multi-element embedding, allowing you to embed as many Flutter views as you'd like within another web application. Our latest release to the stable channel, Flutter 3.27, builds on top of that work. We're making updates to the material widgets to keep pace with its evolving spec, enabling more dynamic layouts to follow modern app design trends, and implementing the latest features from Android 15, including freeform and edge-to-edge -edge mode by default. In iOS, we're adding support for StoreKit 2 in the in-app purchase plugin and continuing to improve our library of Cupertino components. It seems a few developers have already noticed. And on the web, you'll see even more improvements to accessibility and visual fidelity. We're landing fixes for headings, dialogues, passwords, the iOS keyboard, links, and scrollables. Development teams working at Supercell and Universal Studios both, coincidentally, reduced their code base size by 45% after using Flutter. More specifically, the Supercell ID team was able to reduce their core code size by 45% even with the addition of support for desktop. That means both teams managed to cut the lines of code that needs to be reviewed and maintained by nearly half. So instead of spending their cycles maintaining their code base, both teams can focus their time, energy, and resources on the real goal, creating fun and immersive experiences that form lasting memories. Oh, and they may have mentioned that they're fans of Flutter's performance improvements too which is a great segue because Khan will be telling you more about Flutter's performance in the next segment. But before I pass to her, let's take a moment to hear from a team of developers experiencing the benefits of crafting amazing user experiences with Flutter.